Hello everybody, my name is Carmen and welcome back to another tips and tricks video for Animal Crossing. Now these tips are going to be beginner friendly so don't worry if you're new to the game, these will be the tips for you. Also in my first tips and tricks video you guys were so so helpful in the comments so I couldn't help myself but include your guys's tips and tricks in this video. So most of what I'm going to teach you today is from the comments of my last video so if you want to go check that out I'll leave a link for the video in the description. You can also see a little thing in the top right corner right now. I will leave that for part one. Also, before we start, I want to say a huge thank you for 800 subscribers. Are you kidding me? It was only a couple videos ago I was saying thank you for 600. The channel is growing like crazy and I'm so so thankful for everybody who has joined and watched my videos and yeah, I'm just beyond grateful and happy. So you guys really make me want to do more of these videos and I will for the rest of my days so long as I can. One quick thing to add is that I do have a discord. There have been a couple people showing up and talking once in a while and it has been really sweet and I love that interaction between people in my discord so I will also leave a link to that in the description as well. But without further ado, let's get right on to these tips and tricks. Okay, so for our first tip we have selling your bugs to Flick. What Flick does is that he can buy your bugs from you. Now last video I mentioned how you can save up your bugs and sell them at the Nook's Cranny to make bells and that is a good way to make bells. How However, if you'd like to make even more bells, then Flick is the way to go because he will sell them at a higher price than they will at Nook's Cranny. So save your bugs and wait for Flick to come around because it will be worth it to make a few extra bells. And there is no limit to the amount of bugs that he will buy from you. He loves bugs, as you can tell. Our next tip is about how to avoid being stung by wasps when you're shaking your trees. Now this happens to a lot of us. Daily, there will be wasps nests fall from your trees when you're shaking them for materials. So this is something you wanna be cautious of. So to avoid being stung, I would have your net out as you shake your tree. Your character will automatically turn towards the falling nest and you only have to swing your net at the wasps to catch them and not be stung. This is very, very helpful. I used to shake my trees all the time without my net out and now it's just common sense for me in the game I just take my net and I have it on me and out when I'm shaking my trees and then whenever the wasp nest falls I get prepared and then I can swing at them it's very simple and it's very easy and if it turns out that your wasp is new to your critopedia you can take it to blathers and put it into the museum this will just check something off your list for the bugs you have to collect while we are on the topic of shaking trees my third tip for this video is how you can get a daily item from shaking your trees now when I did this I ended up shaking multiple trees and I got two items so I guess there's more than one so try your chances at that however you will be guaranteed at least one it's just a nice way to add some more furniture to your collection so if you're looking for things to do daily shake your trees but don't forget to have your net out this next tip is genius I never thought of it and thank you to the people in the comments who told me this but it is buying a wetsuit when you are just starting the game now I'll tell you why this can be very helpful if you are just beginning and do not have a vault pole recipe you can buy a wetsuit and swim around to the other side of your island. How smart is that? When you're just beginning the game, a lot of people are just waiting around to get those necessary recipes to get to other parts of your island, but Nook's Cranny can sell you a wetsuit, so then you can just swim around to the other side of your island and explore away. I started the game before there were wetsuits, but let me tell you, if I had access to that knowledge at the time and there were wetsuits, I would be running to Nook's Cranny faster than you can say, um, Nook's cr Cranny. And again, on the topic of wetsuits and swimming, our next tip is sea creatures and how those can sell for a lot of bells if you're looking to make some more. So a great way to get more bells is to buy a wetsuit and catch the sea creatures that are located in, well, the sea. You can see the little bubbles rising as I swim towards them and all you have to do is dive under the water and chase right up to them and your character will automatically grab when you're over them. And the great news about catching sea creatures and selling them is that the lowest they can go for is 500. Now you think about that. If you catch a fair amount of sea creatures and you sell them all, the lowest they can go for is 500 so you're not making anything less than that and 500 bells really adds up if you sell enough besides that sea creatures are just fun to catch anyway so give it a try and see how you like it and if you get duplicates or multiple of the same ones then you can just sell them at a great price for my next tip it is very very similar to last video and it's just the change in technique when hitting your rocks so if you didn't know if you dig a hole next to your rock by accident you're not going to get as many materials as you would have if you did 
didn't dig that hole next to the rock. This means you have to be very efficient while hitting your rocks. You don't want to accidentally dig next to it and ruin your chances of getting more materials. In my last video, I suggested standing in between the rock and an object so that you wouldn't move around, but a more efficient way of doing this is digging two or three holes behind you so that you definitely won't slip and mess up and dig a hole next to your rock. This is a lot more efficient than the tip I gave last time, so thank you to the people in the comments again. Although similar, this is just another way to do it, and you can choose to do it any way you would like. So make sure to be cautious so you can get as many resources as possible. Do you ever notice when you're digging that you see a little meter at the top left corner? Maybe it'll say 1 out of 10, 0 out of 10, 5 out of 10 even. Well, this is a measurement of your strength, depending on how much food you eat. So in the game, if you eat something, it'll give you a boost in your strength, so that way you can maybe dig up a whole tree or break a whole rock if you even wanted to. And I know we have all tried this before if we are familiar with this food meter, is that we're trying to eat them one at a time to try and get as much strength as possible. But instead of doing this, if you didn't know, you could eat turnips and that will give you 10 spaces at a time, so it will completely fill up your strength so that way you can use it 10 times. Also, cooked or purchased foods will give you five spaces in that bar, so this is a much more efficient way to eat your stuff and get your strength other than just eating fruits one by one and it taking forever, so this is a very, very helpful tip if you didn't know. Now this next tip is for what to do if you want to get rid of that food buff. If you didn't know, which I didn't before I read this in my comments, if you use the toilet in the game, it will get rid of that food and fruit strength that you have acquired by eating all of those items. I did not know about this and this is so helpful for if you wanted to dig at some rocks but you accidentally ate something and you don't want it to be destroyed, things like that. If you use the toilet in the game, which you can purchase, you will be able to get rid of that buff. So that's a very, very nice thing to know. Now, coming back to the topic of getting a daily item, you can also get daily messages in a bottle. You will find these along your shorelines anywhere on your beaches and it will happen once a day. You'll have a cute little message from somebody out there and then you will also receive a DIY recipe. If you don't know the DIY recipe, then great, you can learn a new one. But if you do, maybe you can give it to one of your villagers or you can save them all up and sell them to real life people someday. That's a very good way of connecting to people and sharing your love for the game and helping people out too. So that's always an option if you know your DIY recipe already. In my last video, I mentioned how valuables such as iron and gold can sell for a lot, which they can. But if you wanted to get even more bells for these things, crafting those materials into items will make them much more valuable. You can craft things into gold items or iron items or any of the valuables that you may have acquired. You can craft these with your DIY recipes and sell them at Nook's Cranny for a very nice price. So before selling them as just what they are, like ingots and nuggets and stuff like that, make sure you see if you have any DIY recipes that you can craft so that you can sell them for more. Because who doesn't like more bells, am I right? Nook's Cranny is a very, very beneficial spot to your island. Not only can you buy new items for your house, for outside, for anything, but you can sell your items and there are specific items such as hot items that they will buy for double that day. There are two hot items of the day and they change every day. Today it was a stone stool and a medium wooden partition. So I'm going to take my chances and craft a lot of stone stools and I'll show you how they can sell for double. If you wanted to make more bells and you wanted to sell some of your items that you don't like, take a look at what the hot items of the day are because that will really boost your profits in selling your items. Hot items were very helpful for me when just starting out. This tip can be pretty obvious, but to some like me when starting who had no idea, this is just a tip for in real life, your controls and how to speed things up. To sprint, you can hold B while you're running. This makes you sprint. How obvious is that? To me, it wasn't. And to beginners, it might not be obvious either, but now you know that tip and you can run around your island at full speed. Another control is to skip dialogue. You can press B multiple times so it will stop the villagers from talking so much, especially Isabel. And one more control is for when you're crafting items and you don't want to sit through that crafting animation after you have confirmed what you want to craft, you can press A and this will speed up the animation. So if you didn't know these controls, well now you do. A very helpful tip is inventory space and how to increase that. Now as we all know, we can acquire Nook Miles from doing tasks on the island. There is an ABD machine in resident services that you can use and you can shop for anything with your Nook Miles tickets. But a specific section will really benefit you. With redeeming your Nook Miles, you can get a lot of cool perks in this game, such as increasing your 
inventory space, which is crucial to this game. If you don't want to be like me and emptying out your pockets every single second of the day in Animal Crossing, you need to up your space for your inventory. So my advice is, save up your Nook Miles tickets. There are more perks other than just increased inventory space, maybe I'll touch on those in the next tips and tricks video, but for now, I would save up to increase your inventory space. This way, you will have so much more room to carry your items around. Every so often, a meteor shower will happen on your island, and this will happen if it is a nice and clear sky. While the meteor shower is happening, shooting stars will fall from the sky, and you can hold A to wish upon them. The next day in the game, you can find star fragments all along your beach, depending on how many you wished upon. I don't know what the correct term for them, but I'm just gonna call them like zodiac star fragments, but as you can see in front of me right now are the 12 zodiac star fragments. You can use these to craft so many DIY recipes. There are also the yellow regular star fragments and the large star fragments that you can craft into anything if you have the recipe for it. And speaking of recipes, there is a character in the game called Celeste, and fun fact, this is Blather's sister. She will come on nights where there's a chance of a meteor shower happening. You can find her roaming around your island on nights of a meteor shower, and she can sometimes hook you up with some pretty cool zodiac themed recipes. You can also use these little star fragments just to decorate around your island. I personally use the green, purple, and orange ones because my island is actually secondary color themed, and I litter these everywhere on my island just to give it that pop and that glow and that mystical feel of everything. So they're also a very good thing for decor. So if you don't know what to do with them and you don't have any recipes, well, decor is a very nice way to use them as well. Who doesn't love customization? My next tip is how you can change your island tune and your island flag. When Isabel eventually comes to your island, she is so helpful because she will help you with so many things about your island. She will tell you how the ratings are, she will help you with ordinances, things like that. She will also help you with the tune and the flag, so customization of your island, and I can show you how to change those right now. So if you talk to her, you can talk about the island features and this will give you the option of those two. Now you can have the option to change your tune or your flag. If anybody can guess this in the comments, that would be so cool and so funny and props to you if you do because it might be pretty hard to hear but my hint is it's a theme from a show. You can look up so many different tunes for your island. There are videos upon videos about what to do when you're trying to create your theme. Once you talk to Isabel about changing your flag, you will then be given the option to choose from the custom designs that you have saved. And then this will be what displays on your flag outside. I don't have enough room nor a specific one chosen. So I'm just gonna choose this quilt for now to show you what it can look like on the outside. And here it is. Now you can imagine the cool possibilities with this nice feature. In my last tips and tricks video, I talked about crops and how you can get them, and I talked about how you can get them from leaf, but what I didn't know, and once again, thank you to my comments for telling me this, is that the little guy on the dock of your island who can take you for boat tours for 1,000 nook miles, he can take you to a mystery island and there can occasionally be a crop there that you can gather. Now with this mystery island, I found wheat, so now I can take that back to my island and plant it and do whatever I want with it. This is a very, very cool tip that I was told about as I did not know it, however, it only happens occasionally. I tried going to another island previously and there was no crops on it, so it's kind of a gamble, but I think that if you don't want to wait around once a week for leaf to come around, then this is a nice way to go because you get one once a day. So yeah, there's lots of things to gain from mystery island trips with Kevin. With Animal Crossing being a game mostly about learning how to manage your money, what would this game be without your typical scammer? This guy who I'm talking about is named Red. He will show up once in a while on your secret beach in this sketchy looking boat, and he will have art pieces located inside that boat. Don't worry, he won't capture you and take you away, he just wants to sell you some art. But the question is, is it real or not? He will offer you paintings and other forms of artwork such as statues at a cousin's discount. You should be cautious because although some of the art may be real, a lot of it can be fake too. You can look at guides online to differentiate the paintings to see which one is real and which one is fake. So know this, if you're not sure and you think you bought a real one but you don't know if it's fake and you want to donate it to the museum, 
Blathers will not take fake paintings or statues as donations for the museum. And another fact to know is that you can only buy one art item each time Red comes over. So it's only once each time. So choose wisely and carefully. And if you do happen to get scammed, you can also use these as decor because they don't look awful. If you look very closely, you can tell the difference if you really study these guides. But other than that, they still look very beautiful and very nice for island decor. So when you get scammed, they don't go completely to waste. A great tip that somebody mentioned in the comments section of my last video is how you should eat your native fruit when you are digging up your trees or using it to gain strength because native fruit are worth less than ones that are not native. So for example, I'm eating cherries here because that is the original fruit that grew on my island when I first started the game. If I were to eat oranges, those are more valuable than my cherries because they are not native to my island. So if you wanted to sell your fruits, maybe reconsider what you're eating and eat your native fruit so that you can maximize your profit when you sell your fruits. You never want to waste your potential for gaining more bells in the end. If you buy your turnips one Sunday and leave them past the next Sunday, they will rot and they will be pretty much worthless, except for if you want to catch some bugs that you may not have in your Critopedia. Rotten turnips will eventually bring ants and flies to them, and I personally didn't know about the fly until I saw this. I was trying to just catch the ants, but then I realized there was a fly there, so that was a bonus too, and I added something new to my Critopedia, and so can you. You can then take these to Blathers and donate them to the museum so you can have them in your little bug sanctuary, which is so neat and so fun. And my final tip for this video is getting rid of your villagers, how to know when they want to leave, and how to actually get rid of them. About every two weeks, the option of a villager wanting to move on and leave your island will pop up. This is a random villager each time, except for the newest villager on your island, in which they will never ask to leave unless they are not considered the newest. So for example, if you wanted to get rid of the newest, you made a mistake, or maybe you got an auto fill and you wanted to get rid of them, you can't until somebody else new comes to your island. If they ask you if they should move away, you can either answer yes or no and get them to stay. They will listen to either one of which you pick, so pick wisely. The next day, they will be considered in boxes, which is the term for them packing up their things in the day before they move away. If they're in boxes, you can just keep them on your island and wait for them to go, or you can invite other people to your island and they can invite the villager in boxes to their island, which is very, very cool. Once there is an open plot on your island, you can go to Mystery Islands using your Nook Miles tickets and there will be a random villager out of hundreds of them in the game on that mystery island. If you go to a bunch of islands in a row, this is typically called a villager hunt. And I did this in my last Animal Crossing video. So if you wanna check that out, I will also leave a option in the description for you to check that out. And if you really wanna find a specific villager, then you have to be careful because within one to maybe three days after there's an open plot, it can autofill. So be very careful and make sure to pay attention to the time in between when you take breaks, stuff like that. What I'm saying is be quick. And with that said, that concludes our part two of tips and tricks. I love recording tips and tricks because it's so helpful to other people. And in turn, I learn a lot of things from you guys in the comments. So if you know anything that wasn't touched upon this video and you'd like for it to be shown in maybe a part three, then comment those down below and I will definitely include them in the next part when I do so. I love interacting with you guys. So I would like to ask this question. Did you learn something new today? If so, please mention what it is in the comments. I love to hear that people have learned something new from my videos and from the tips that the people in the comment section of last video taught me so I can teach you. That's amazing. If you did learn something new, let me know. Another quick reminder about my Discord. Again, I will leave a link in the description for the invite to that server. So eventually there will be more people to join and you guys can have so much to talk to and you can meet some new friends. But with that said, I'm going to leave it off here. So thank you to anybody and everybody who watched this video. I really, really appreciate it. And I would also appreciate if you subscribed and liked this video. It really helps our channel to grow and it helps me push my content out to more people who love this content and in turn, it makes me inspired to make more of this type of stuff. So it's a win-win for everybody, really. All right, thank you again to everybody who watched and I will see you again in another Animal Crossing episode. Bye.